For as long as I can remember, sports has always been at the forefront of my mind. If I wasn't watching basketball, I was playing it. It wasn't until I was watching Sue Bird in the 2018 WNBA semifinals did I realize just how much women's sports meant to me. Maybe it was the raw tenacity it takes to play sport at the highest level, or just the sheer talent I watched on the screen, but I was hooked. Since then, I've religiously watched the U.S. women's national soccer team, the UConn women's basketball program. I mean, my entire life revolves around women's sports. Me, and along with billions of fans around the world, and fueled by seeing successful athletes thrive in their sports. The outcome of a game makes or breaks our day. The worst part of sports though, more than your favorite team losing, is the injuries. Seeing the best players in the world have to put their careers on hold because of an injury is absolutely heartbreaking. Injuries are a part of sports, inevitable if you will. But what if I could tell you some could be prevented? The women's sports industry is plagued with injuries, and it is due to the lack of female-centric exercise science programs. Injuries are a part of sports, as I said. Yet, female athletes participating in running, cutting, and jumping type sports tend to have a four to six times higher chance of injury compared to their male counterparts in the same exact sport. The best exercise science programs were created with the male anatomy in mind. From warm-ups and cool-downs to intense trainings, the best sports science programs that optimize male athlete performance don't necessarily work on all female athletes. Women are not small men. When talking about the body and relationship to sports movement, we not only tend to forget the anatomical differences, but also the psychological, biomechanical, and hormonal differences that inherently differentiate male and female kinesthetics. On average, females tend to have a wider pelvis. This leads to differences in the alignment of bone and ankles. The difference in hip angle also makes thigh muscles having to put more pressure on the kneecaps while the ligaments therefore have to work even harder to maintain the correct knee alignment. This leads to the degeneration of bones, ligaments, and tendons in the area, and once again, overall, increasing the susceptibility of a female athlete injuring themselves. The increased hip angle also impacts movement. Let's take jump landing from a jump, for example. When a female athlete lands from a jump, they tend to not only land more upright, but they also land with their knees closer in together. This creates higher chances of injury. A woman's menstrual cycle also impacts their chances of injury. Increased levels of hormone fluctuation leads to laxity of ligaments, and increased estrogen is known to reduce collagen content in said ligaments. The reduction of collagen content then changes the biomechanical properties of structures in the body and once again, creating a, allowing for a woman to have an increased susceptibility to injuries. In performance research, female athletes and females in general only make up less than 5% of research subjects. The bottom line is, females are underrepresented in research and the bodies of female athletes are suffering as a result. In 2022, there's an award, there was an award given for the Ballon d'Or Feminine, which is an international award given by the France uh, Football Association. 25% of the 2022 nominees tore their ACL, including the eventual winner, Alexia Pateas. Other sports science statistics show that in certain sports such as basketball, for every one injury to a male athlete, there's approximately 3.5 injuries to female athletes. In volleyball, there's a ratio of one to three. And in soccer, there's a ratio of about one to four. And then in recreational skiing, for every one injury to a male athlete, there's almost six injuries to female athletes. Recent years has seen a spike in interest in women's sports. 
But alongside that, there have also been a massive spike in injuries to female professional athletes. Let's take women's professional soccer, for example. We are less than 50 days out from the 2023 World Cup, and some of the best athletes in the world, and Leah Williamson, Beth Mead, Mallory Swanson, and Kristen Press, are all out because of knee-related injuries. In 2022, some of the best young stars in Tierna Davidson, Katarina Macario, and so many other players tore their ACLs at peak moments of their careers. The high rates of injuries to female athletes not only prevents these athletes from performing on the world's biggest stage, but it also prevents and deters the growth of the women's sports industry. The solution? Invest, research, implement. Doing these three things will help reduce the high rates of injuries to female athletes around the world. As I've said, it is a known fact that female athletes are more susceptible to injuries, yet we are not doing any new research to try and decrease these rates. We must research how we can optimize female athlete performance during different parts of a menstrual cycle. We must research ways that we can create prehab and rehab techniques specific to female anatomy. And we must research ways that we can create sports technology that is suited for the female anatomy. Let's take shoes for example. The design of sports specific shoes was created with the male anatomy in mind. So differences in weight distribution, angle of bone structure, and overall foot shape would mean that most shoes are not ideal for female athletes. The sports technology industry takes the idea of shrink it and pink it into full effect. And yes, this is a real thing. The research and development of female anatomy specific sports technology will not only decrease the rates of injuries to female athletes, but it will also protect athletes better. Female athletes participate in the same number of games or the same number of tournaments as their male counterparts. Yet, access to the same top level care is not provided. From charter planes allowing for male athletes to travel stress-free during the season, to more personnel, more tra better training equipment, and overall better training regimens, male athletes are able to work on their craft stress-free while female athletes are not awarded the same luxury, especially in professional sports. The implementation and research into these sports technology and female-centric ideas is a necessity. As I've said, it is a known fact that female athletes need to be trained differently from their male counterparts, yet we as a society have not changed what we're doing. The United States women's national soccer team is a prime example of proof that investments of research, energy, and time will lead to better athletes. The team sports scientists use what is known about hormone fluctuations to optimize the performance of each and every athlete on the team during their high and low energy phases of the menstrual cycle. The Chelsea women's football club team is also known for using similar technology and once again, both teams have proven that it does reduce the risk of injury to female athletes. The more teams that invest into giving their athletes the best care possible and access to the best sports technology possible, the more athletes will be able to perform consistently on the highest level. Injury is a part of sports. There's absolutely no denying it but there are ways we can decrease the high levels of injuries in the women's sports industry. I am not the only women's sports fan that believes that change is necessary. Everyone from top level female athletes to fans around the world realize that we need to do more to not only protect our athletes, but protect our athletes' bodies as well. We must find ways to come together and to be able to push the women's sports industry forward by investing, research and researching and implementing new technology. Thank you.